Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Two Up Front here at the Attention Era Media Studios. I am Baxter Colburn. And I'm Simon Provan. A very good day to you, Simon Provan. A day later than we usually get to hang out. Uh, how was your Wednesday? I didn't get to see you for once. It was good, Baxter. I'm trying to remember what Wednesday was like for me. That was like 24 hours ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> when you're a parent and a professional and you've got everything else going on, a lot, a lot of stuff happens. Absolutely, like. yes. But, yeah. uh, you, you seem well, though. You're wearing the USA jersey, I am, representing. Yeah, which, which I feel a little bad because our guest today is, is actually on the Canadian, Canadian national team. So it's no offense to her. but well, She can't see us, thankfully, so that's, that's the oh, best I, well, thing. I just, blew it. I just blew it then. I didn't have to say anything. You didn't. You could have been fine. She never would have known. Uh, you, could have been, you could have been dressed in your favorite Mountie uniform, and she never would have <laughs> known. Uh, that would have been a sight to see, honestly. Maybe, was, maybe we should have done that. It's coming Mountie uniforms, Mountie Thursdays. I don't know. All right, well, we've got a fun one today for you, folks. Uh, we've got Kaylin Sheridan of the Sky Blue FC on the NWSL joining us. And then our good friend Chris Blakely of Vavil USA is also going to be swinging by the program as well, too, to help us figure out what the heck is going on in Major League Soccer. Because I don't know. I really don't. I don't even know if you know. I know Seattle's really bad. <laughs> That's true. And I know New England is incredibly unpredictable. Aside from that... Chris is a Seattle fan, so I, I had to throw that in you there. You had to. You absolutely have to. So we're excited for both of them uh, to join us in just a little bit. Of course, as we are moving along with the program, if you have any thoughts or comments, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We are broadcasting live here on Facebook and YouTube and on Spreaker.com as well. So many different places for you. You can also find us... Uh, of course, on our website, the number two, twoupfrontsoccer.com, and on the Brew Sports website, brewsportsnet.com as well. And, of course, Brew Sports has their Facebook page, but we also have our own Facebook page, Two Up Front. Just put that in the search bar. You'll find us there. You can check us out on Twitter, at Two Up Front Soccer. He is at Baxter Colburn, and I am at Simon Provan. Oh, yes, indeed. All right, uh, as we dive into the show, as we always do in the beginning, it is the kick around where we take a little skirt around the soccer landscape to see what is going on. A wee bit of a skirt today, A Baxter. wee bit. We head across the pond i'm glad i brought my passport with me today but you've got some interesting news for us simon what have you dug up for well, us? well I, lo I love this uh, and i can't say necessarily that i that i dug it up but uh, across the twitter sphere and then doing a little bit more research there actually didn't need to be more research done but basically the english fa has come out and said that they will do retroactive suspensions for people they find diving in the game Really? Now, the committee is going to be one ex-official, one ex-manager, and one ex-player. It has to be a unanimous decision in order for a player to be suspended. But uh, wow. I love it, Baxter. I, I absolutely love it. I, I love the idea of, you know, first of all, that you can give a yellow card for simulation. We haven't seen that yep. happen all too often because sometimes in the, in the heat of battle, it's difficult really for a referee to see if it was simulation or not. True. Uh, so this gives an opportunity for a board to go back, look at it, maybe slow things down and, mm -hmm. and see, was this, was this a dive? And, Boy, if there's one way that can really cut down on diving, you would hope this would be it. I really hope this ends up being a help, not a hindrance, in all honesty. I mean, this is one of those things that you see diving too much. I mean, how many times do you see people wasting time? And we see it all the time here in America. Anytime we play the Mexican teams, unfortunately, it's a stereotype, but it's a true stereotype. That's why it's a stereotype. But it's very interesting, and I hope that in England that this will end up expanding to the wide frame because I can't even imagine this at World Cup games or even the Euros as well, too. Imagine, like, going back and saying, oh, Ronaldo Doe, if he's out for the next game, that's an elimination game. Suddenly Portugal is sitting there going, uh, what do we do? Yeah, it's a, that's the one thing for, for FIFA, especially, you know, with how scandalous that organization has been, it yep. would be very difficult for FIFA to have this as part of their disciplinary <laughs> action because... Well, are they just fixing games then? Because, you know, that's that's going to be what people would start saying is, no, they took Ronaldo out of that game because they didn't want Portugal to make it all the way to the finals or, or something to that effect. Right. It always ends up going like that, unfortunately. But I hope this ends up working out. You said this is in the Premier League, or are they trying this in the lower divisions uh, it, first? It's, it, that's what's not extremely clear. I'm sure somebody out there can, uh, can fix me right on this. Please do. It is the FA, and they're talking about league football, so that means it wouldn't be Premier League. It would be everything... Championship and below that, but okay. uh, but Leicester City's uh, star Robert Huth has mm -hmm. actually tweeted out about this, so I, so I do think perhaps it is with uh, Premier League. But he's tweeted out and said, "Hey, this is a great start. Let me get it here, Baxter. Uh, now let's add pretending to be injured and crying when you lose as part of this." <laughs> 
Some people are just the best. Here, listen, comes. I'm I'm actually I'm totally gr- oh, fine with with adding yeah. injury, faking injury to this because mm-hmm. uh, that's another annoyance. That's what you hear all the time in this kind of thing. It's like you see the guy go down screaming like he just broke his leg in half. A little magic, little spray. magic spray. I'm great, and then he goes and scores a goal. It's like I thought you were just dead five seconds ago. Like what are you doing? I think that definitely should be reviewed, and penalties need to be dealt out. So I'm excited for it. I hope it ends up uh, making its way across the pond. Yeah, and you know, actually, this started in. Scotland a few years ago. Leave it to the uh, Scots. That's right. So started golf. What's so the, next? so even though the FA is the the first really big name to take this right. on, you got to give credit to the Scottish FA for Absolutely. having done this for a couple of years. And actually, the English FA reached out to the Scots and said, "How is this working for you?" Guys you guys are doing well. We we beat you a lot in an international game, but let's be friends for a moment. You know, are they still a part of Brexit? I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know. We try not to figure that out. <laughs> uh, anyway, what else did you find out? I know that there's we love upsets. For the most part. We do. We do, uh, Baxter. It's one of the things that we love a lot, though, is the U.S. Open Cup. And obviously, we've had Josh Hakala on from the Cup.us before as well. And we're going to have him on again here soon to help us start to dive through the tournament because he just is obviously obsessed with it. That's why he runs the league, basically, when it, like, from the website perspective. Uh, but already, first couple of rounds, some craziness yeah, just, just, taking place. Just, just some nice upsets to throw at you. Reading United AC, who is in the PDL, Ooh. obviously in Pennsylvania, uh, <laughs> defeated the New York Cosmos 3-2. Yes. to two. Baxter. You know that the PDL is the Premier Divisional Soccer Development League. Development League, yeah. yeah Premier Development League. Yeah. So I, thought you, I, thought, I thought you were saying they were like the Pennsylvania something league. No, no, like, no. For the no, fact that not, it was no, 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 because it was in Reading, Reading oh, United, okay. which is I, I see, I see how that worked for you though. For a second, I'm like. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, but maybe. Uh, some other upsets here. The Michigan Bucks mm-hmm. uh, upset Indy 11. Obviously, Indy 11 in the NASL. The Michigan Bucks in the uh, PDL as well. They had just beaten Ann Arbor FC, who played yeah. the Milwaukee Torrent uh, MPSL teams there. Uh, there was one more, Baxter, if I can page through here. Chicago FC United of the PDL also taking down the Pittsburgh Riverhounds Ooh. of the USL 3 to 1 there Baxter uh, not an upset but FC Wichita of the NPSL took St. Louis FC of the USL into penalties last night and it I'm sorry into extra time last night FC Wichita lost by a goal in that one uh, just a quick scan here I'm looking to see if there are any other upsets I know there was a 9-0 win somewhere in here ooh can't find where that is uh but anyways, listen, the, the easy way to do this, you had talked about Josh Hackle. I want to plug his website. The cup.us is a fantastic website. Great yes. brackets, has all the results. Um, Josh does a great job with this. Anybody who is part of uh, in the soccer community of this country knows who Josh Hackle is and, and knows that he does a – well, I, w- I would venture to say a better job covering the U.S. Open Cup than U.S. Soccer does. Yeah, I would agree with you on that one. So, All right, well, speaking of U.S. Soccer, uh, the NWSL is, of course, very near and dear to our hearts. Uh, however, when you are a Canadian in the NWSL, obviously you support the league because you play in that country, but her roots run very deep when it comes to the Canadian side of things. Uh, she is the goalkeeper for Sky Blue FC. She is a rookie. She was drafted uh, late, uh, the 27th pick overall, I do believe. She hails from Clemson University. Go Tigers National Championship there in the college football realm. Uh, and she joins us on the program now. It's Kaylin Sheridan. Kaylin, a very good day to you. Welcome to Two Up Front. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here today, Kaylin. We're excited to, to have you on the program today. Uh, you've had a lot happen for you in your career, I'd say, over the last uh, couple of months. Getting drafted, of course, uh, still at a very young age, you get your first call up as well, too. But uh, let's let's start with the call, uh, let's start with the draft first and foremost. Uh, being selected as a goalkeeper, of course, is, is sometimes in a league like the NWSL. We always say it's such a goalkeeper-driven league because there's so many talented goalkeepers. Absolutely, it's sometimes right. hard for the younger ones to break in. Uh, <laughs> you find yourself a starter now for Sky Blue FC. You played all five games to start the season. Uh, what was your draft day experience like? How are you feeling now that you've been a part of these first couple of games as the consistent starter? Um, well, the draft was definitely an exciting experience. I think that if you get to be a part of the draft, it's definitely something you want to go to and really enjoy. It's definitely a nerve wracking occasion waiting for your name to be called and wondering if you will get called. But, you know, once you do hear your name, you're just excited to be a part of something amazing. And especially that I got picked to go to Sky Blue because I really believe in what they're trying to do here and, you know, make a difference and bring this team up again. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of differences for yourself, Colleen, uh, I'm curious what the transition has been like for you from Clemson to Sky Blue. We, we've had a number of players on the show, and they talk about how it's a quicker game, obviously. But I'm wondering if there's a difference between coming up the ranks as a goalkeeper versus being a, 
uh, outfield player? Well, it's definitely a quicker game. Um, it's it's exactly what it is, is taking the best players and putting them all together. So you're weeding out a lot. But at the same time, I think having played internationally helped me a lot because it's a lot more similar to that style where it's just a lot faster. The players are a lot more technical. And, you know, overall, it's a, it's a tougher league, but it really gives you the opportunity to become a better player. Yeah, speaking of international experience, of course, in your back line, you have two internationals standing in front of you. Kelly O'Hara and Christy Pierce now used to be Certainly Red Pumps. Uh, I'm helps. curious what you take from them day in and day out, both at the club level, but also what you can take back uh, in a, uh, on an international level. Um, well, I have to say I learn a lot from Christy on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, she's a very intelligent player from her experience alone. Whenever I have a question, I go straight to Christy. You know, I just want to be able to elevate my game, and she gives me the opportunity to do that. And I think what I what I get from Kelly is a lot of energy and passion. She just drives the team and keeps us going and making sure everybody's working. And it's just something that you got to remember, like, that's the most important thing is to keep working. You could have a bad day, but as long as you keep working like Kelly does, then you're good to go. So having them in front of me really gives me a lot to look to look at to grow as I'm like a pretty younger player, as you said. It's my first year, rookie year. They're both very experienced internationally and in this league, and I can learn a lot from both of them in different aspects. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you've got two acclaimed ladies when it comes to the international soccer scene, but also in the NWSL yes. uh, as well. Uh, Kaylin, last season it was kind of a, a chaotic time for Sky Blue. They had uh, Caroline Stanley as their goalie. Then they went through Caroline Casey a little bit as well. Then you come in and obviously Stanley exits. As a rookie coming in, did you have any inkling that you were going to be a starter? Did Christy Holly give you any thoughts moving into the season that you had a shot at being the starter, or did you have in mind that you were going to be sitting on the bench for at least part of the season? Um, I definitely came in and knew that I had to earn it and work for it and prove that if I wanted to start for this team that I deserved it and that I was good enough to do so. So coming in, it was very kind of, you know, you're excited about being drafted and you know that, you know, you have the international experience and you think that you're okay, but this is a, a very tough league. So they definitely gave me the chance to, to earn it and feel like I deserved it. And I feel like that doesn't go away. I'm still fighting for it and trying to keep it at the same time. Um, but I definitely am excited that I got to start the last five games and, I look forward to keep working to keep going. Well, speaking of earning things, great win this past weekend, three to one over Houston. <laughs> Let's not talk about in that. Houston. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Dash fan. I'm just going to be honest about it right after. Oh, I'm that. sorry. I know. I, know. <laughs> but, I am too. Some days, don't worry. <laughs> but look, one of the stories on the season so far is Sarah Killian, mm -hmm. midfielder, four yeah. goals in five games. Uh, here's a stat you may not know. I'm, I'm a stat nerd, by the way, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> four shots on goal, four goals. That's, that's amazing. That's kind of the conversion rate you want if you're a forward, I feel Absolutely. Like. Uh, how important is she to your team? Obviously, scoring goals is, is part of it, but, but what is it that she brings day in and day out that's making her so successful this season as well as uh, a, decent, a decent start for Sky Blue so far? Well, she's definitely a consistent player for our team. She's somebody that we keep in the midfield, and, you know, that's that's where we have to go through if we want to get forward or backwards. So it's a key role for us, and we're definitely lucky to have her there. She's a very skilled player, and she's also a very smart player, which I think comes in handy a lot. She's able to see the field and see the players and, and help us out. But I think the one of the biggest things that she brings is she's not afraid to call us out when we need to be called out and just make sure that we're keeping to the standard. What would you say looking at Sky Blue right now? They have obviously, as we mentioned, had some good success early on. You guys have to take on Houston again this weekend, so you kind of go back and forth there from being home yep. and away. It's uh, like the old school uh, English playoffs. <laughs> it is. It really is. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at the standings right now. Sky Blue's in sixth place right now, and the five teams ahead of you, Chicago, Boston, Portland, Seattle, North Carolina, that's kind of, aside from Boston, let's be honest, that those other four teams are exactly who people thought was going to be in those top four spots. Simon and I talked a lot last season about how we really had no clue what Sky Blue really was because you never knew what you were going to get. What is, in your opinion, since you've been around this team only for a couple of short months, is your opinion of what is Sky Blue? Is they, are they an actual contender this season? Should fans have a reason to get excited about what Sky Blue is this season, or do we have to wait a couple more seasons to finally see that, <laughs> that championship run? No, we're definitely a contender this season. I think one of the biggest things that our team has is um, a cohesion. We're a very together team. We pl we're not a bunch of egos or big names or, or people who just – are very skilled individually. We're a team where we have skills, but we're also very good at playing together. And that's one of our keys. That's what we're trying to stay to and keep to. And that's one of the things that 
I loved when I heard that I was getting drafted here was that was their big thing is we're a family. We're going to play as a team and we're going to get there together. And that's what I love to hear. That's one of the reasons I went to Clemson is the same idea. And that's why I think we're a strong contender. And yeah, we have maybe a rocky start, but I think we're off to a great, a great path. One other quick thing, at least for me here, before we let you run, uh, Kaylin, is that uh, playing the position that you do as a goalkeeper, uh, when I think of goalkeepers, and I think the normal person thinks of goalkeepers, you think of someone that's you know, 5'10", 6'2", something like that. People don't know you're 5'4". Um, I, I, I didn't, <laughs> that's I didn't, a mistake. I'm not 5'4". You're not? Okay, then, no, then Sky uh, Blue is lying to me. Then How tall are you, actually? Because that completely changes I'm, my I'm question. 4'11". <laughs> you are 5'10"? <laughs> yeah, I'm 4'11". I'm 5'10", yeah. Wow, I'm then you need to yell at somebody on Sky Blue's. It. You need to yell at somebody at Sky Blue then, because I almost looked like a total idiot. See, I thought, trying to throw everybody off, you know? Yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I thought it was like the old, the old way of, uh, you know, basketball football players being listed as 345, right. but really they're... They're 285. Right. So, you know, oh, cool. We're yeah. playing against a 5 4 goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, it's probably a good thing that I'm not playing against you then because I'd have been like, oh, great. She's super short. And then I'd have been like, wait a minute. She's super tall. This is so wrong. <laughs> well, never mind. Then completely evade everything that I was just about yeah, to no ask. Worries. Then. <laughs> did you have a question, Simon? I, I, that actually makes sense. <laughs> I did have a question. Obviously, we, we talked about you as an international player for Canada. Uh, latest mm-hmm. stats that I'm looking at show three call ups. Um, any good banter between you and the U.S. internationals? <laughs> um, there's de- not quite banter. It's it's always a friendly rivalry between Canada and the U.S. There will always be a rivalry. We're neighboring countries. It's going to be there. But, I mean, we're on the same team here, so that's what's important right now. When it comes to the day where we have to play against each other, you know, we might be a little bit more serious. But it's always fun. And there are players that I can learn from, and there are players that one day maybe I'll be able to teach them something just from the back. But... I mean, as we're here on Sky Blue, that's what's most important. Absolutely. But speaking about the international level, have you heard any more about call-ups coming up? Obviously, you're an allocated player, so Canada thinks highly of you. Mm -hmm. But have you been in contact at all with with the Federation? Uh, Well, we're always in contact. You know, there's opportunities coming this year in the FIFA windows, and we'll see. Maybe I'll get another chance to come and, and get a chance to see the field, or even just training with the team is always a big step for me. And I always learn something when I go to camp, so I'm looking forward to that. Well, we are definitely looking forward to continuing to follow your career, Kaylin. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to stop by today on Two Up Front, and uh, we wish you and Sky Blue uh, the very best of luck. Not too much luck this weekend against Houston, but the rest <laughs> of the year, the rest of the year, I hope at least personally that you have a good rest. Go of your out season. and beat them. Yeah, it probably will. Yeah, too. If anything is going to happen, that's what we're going to see. But uh, Kaylin, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. All right, there goes Kaylin Sheridan on the shopfootsell.com call in line. Great to hear from her. A uh, little fun, jarring, and fun banter, of course. That, Absolutely. That, that's how you know you've got a good guest, as you can you can go back and forth like that a little bit. So uh, any takeaways from what she had to say, Simon? She she had a lot to throw at us, and I thought that her comment about saying that Sky Blue is a championship contender kind of rang a little sour with me. I was just, <laughs> I think that that is a little ambitious. I respect her for saying that, but I think it's a bit ambitious, personally. Yeah, but I think as a professional athlete, you have to have that attitude. Of course. No matter, even, you know, even if you're the Cleveland Browns, you got to believe you're going to win the Super Bowl <laughs> every year. That's true. That is very true. Um, no, be a my, bad my example, but, but I think But I right. will say, <laughs> it's funny, because actually what I was going to say is I think sh- she was very realistic. She talked about the rocky start. I, mm-hmm. I actually give them a little bit more credit for the start, I think, than she does. Right. Uh, because they are 2-2-1, two, two and one, and that, that mm-hmm. was a nice away victory that they had over Houston. So maybe they've, they've turned that corner. We'll see what happens this coming weekend. Uh, but, but being realistic, but also having that ambition, I think, is, is a great balance. And that's also what makes her uh, a great goalkeeper and, and allows her to be able to play at the international level with Canada. Again, uh, she's been with the youth system for quite a while. She's had three call-ups. I won't be surprised if we see the day that, that she's the starting goalkeeper for Canada, Baxter. And let's be honest, too. When you look at Canada as a whole, they are stacked when it comes to the goalkeeper side of things. I mean, Steph LeBay, you know, Sabrina D'Angelo. Right. You can't – and now, you know – you have this gal as well, too. I mean, they are through and through one of the best goalkeeper classes currently. And I think I said Colleen, by the way. You did, I, I, I did some, So, some, so some I should go on record there. and apologize for that, Kaylin. <laughs> it happens. It's we part of two up front, right? Right. We won't, we won't fault you too badly okay. for that. Okay. It's, it's completely fine. Kind of par but, for the course for us some but, days. But, but uh, you hit it, though, too. It, it, who is Sky Blue FC? Are we, are we actually going to see that team this year? I, I think having her I in goal so. was definitely uh, you know, a, a good move for them. 
but they're still they're still a little bit up and down but again a little bit more positive this year than last year and when you get a coach like Christy Holly in there as well who really does have a plan what he wants overall for the season to look like you mm-hmm. can you can have some faith that these this team believes in themselves that they can go to the championship, Baxter. You're right. I mean, like I mean, I, they're sitting in sixth. They're only two spots out, only a point or, or two are, yeah. out of a playoff spot. And granted, I know it's only five games in, but there's only 20 games in the NWSL, so right. we're already a quarter way into the into the season. <laughs> Going by way too fast. But like, I look at the standings right now, and I look at North Carolina. Aside from that weird fluke with Orlando, which we'll talk about at some point later on, uh, they're the, still the team to beat for me this season. Seattle is way better than Sky Blue. Portland is better than Sky Blue. And Chicago, I think, is better than Sky Blue. So obviously anything can happen because these big teams obviously have to play each other as well at some point. So they're going to knock each other down and move them around all at the same time. So that is a possibility. I mean, that's what Western New York did last year. They were a decent team. They weren't a great team. And they found a way to sneak into that fourth spot. And then they took care of business once they were there. And that's what you have to do. Well, and, and they're the best team on the season this year as well. So of that's course. that's actually why I do have some hope uh, for Sky Blue. Of course, you know, they, they North Carolina did have that 3-1 loss right. against Orlando this past weekend. But but you see a team that nobody gave any credit to, Western mm-hmm. New York Flash last year, that ended up winning the championship. I kind of feel like Sky Blue's in that same position. Nobody's giving them credit because of what happened to them last year. That's true. Maybe that's the chip on their shoulder they need to, if not win the championship, Baxter, at least make a run. To it. I would agree with you on that one. Speaking of uh, a team that nobody is giving any credit to, especially after their success last year, it is the Seattle Sounders. But uh, somebody that knows them very well uh, and that has been going through their ups and downs and mostly downs, thank the Lord, uh, has been is the Seattle Sounders. You're, you're uh, it is, I'm not even that cruel I know, to Chris. I know. <laughs> Chris Blakely is here with us on the shopfutsal.com calling line. Chris, how are you, sir? Probably a lot less happy now that I gave you that intro. <laughs> I was actually going to say after that shot you just took. Um, <laughs> no, I'm 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 uh, doing well uh, despite what happened last night. Um, and and the and then also game. the news of the, 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 the upcoming U.S. Open Cup draw. So yeah, other than that, it, I'm okay. It, it's a bit <laughs> annoying though, isn't it, Chris? That I, I get that the U.S. Open Cup's got to be regional because of the amateur teams, but mm. but it is it is annoying to have to watch Seattle and Portland play every single year at this stage in yeah. the Open Cup. Can we, you know, just I just, just for you. the sake of, of changing things up a bit, wouldn't it be nice to see a little bit different draw for these teams? Oh, most definitely. And, you know, as you were saying, I definitely understand about them keeping it regional until, I believe, the semifinals. But, you know, this is the second – Second time in the last three years that the Sounders and Timbers are playing in the fourth round. You know, and it's the third time in the last four years that the Sounders and Timbers are playing. I mean, it it is getting old. It could have happened last year, but uh, it didn't because San Jose knocked off uh, Portland. But, you know, it's just now I've just come to expect it. Like, I don't even know why I get excited for it. Sure, sure, exactly. Uh, it, it, by the way, I, I know we're, we've are we we've shifted to MLS talk, mm-hmm. but – but you got to be happy with the rain, Chris. A six-two win over Washington Spirit. Granted, Unbelievable. it was Washington, but you got to feel good about your women's team out there. Uh, yeah. No, I'm just curious <laughs> to see which team's going to show up this weekend. Is it going to be the team that went to Boston and lost three nothing, or is it going to still be the team that beat Houston five to one, beat Washington six to two, drew two two against a you know a, a decent Portland side mm-hmm. on the road? You know, if they can continue to do that, I'll be perfectly happy with that. I mean, going into last weekend's game, but I think they scored eight goals in the first four weeks, and then they scored six last week. So mm-hmm. they they come in bunches. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm pleased with how they're doing right now. Uh, I can't complain. Uh, it's going to be a while before they can get to the top. It's going to be a while before anybody other than North Carolina is at the top, as you guys were talking about before you brought me on. But uh, you know, 15 more weeks to go, a long way to go. Anything can happen. And honestly, if you're one of the teams that sneaks into the three or four spot, feel fortunate. You usually have a better time than the top two teams. That's so, true. That is that's just true. my experience. Well, just to comment off of that really briefly, too. I mean, that Seattle-Portland game was very back and forth. But, if, you know, Jess Fishlock, his own goal, kind of changed the perception oh. of that entire game, too. So that could have been a game. In theory, Seattle could have won uh, had it not been for Allie Long's late-minute, you know, last-minute heroics as well, too, which she's been doing. 
consistently, I Absolutely. feel like, yeah. as well, yep. too. Yep. So, all right, uh, let's look over at MLS right now, Chris. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, there was a bunch of games that took place last night. Uh, you referenced it earlier, how Seattle lost 3-0 last night. Uh, it really kind of seemed like no matter what Sporting Kansas City did last night, uh, that Seattle just couldn't find an answer for it. A hat trick was scored in 13 minutes uh, by Sporting Kansas City. It, it just seems to kind of be going from bad to worse. Seattle hasn't grabbed a victory since April 29th when they beat the uh, LA Galaxy. But if that's your shining moment on your resume for the last couple of games, even that isn't un in that impressive. But how do you diagnose the problems out west right now in the Cascadia region? Um, I don't know if you have that much time. No. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, honestly losing a lot of, you know, after coming off the MLS Cup win, losing a lot of good key players like, uh, you know, Nelson Valdez. Granted, he only liked to score in the playoffs, but that's fine. But he was a good hold-up player. I like Will Bruin. He's just not that same type of physical. Well, I mean, he's physical, but he doesn't press as much as Nelson does. Um... They got the whole Jordan Morris experience going on, or is he going to be a winger? Is he going to be a forward? Is he going to be a winger? Is he going to be a forward? Well, we do know one thing. He doesn't like to play defense, and he clearly showed that last night. <laughs> um, the back line, honestly, has been in shambles. Uh, you know, they lost Chad Marshall for three games. They've lost Roman Torres for at least three games. Uh, Brad Evans is finally working his way back in after missing every game except for the last two. Uh, you know, Jordy DeLem gets a retroactive red card, and then three minutes of the game yesterday gets another yellow. Then you got, you know, Fisher, who had a great first half, and then, like, the second half yesterday kind of forgot how to soccer. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Jovan Jones getting two yellow cards in a matter of two minutes on Saturday against Chicago for no reason when you're already down 4-1. I mean, it's just I, – I don't want to make excuses, but – a lot of injuries, but and they just don't have the depth like they had last year. I mean, they had. If you look at last year's roster compared to this year's, their depth was so much better because you could bring a guy like a Nelson Valdez off the bench in the 70th minute, and then he can just run around and harass the midfield and back line. They just don't have that anymore. I mean, I like Harrison Ship um, in midfield. He's good. He's just not his. He doesn't do as many you know free kicks and so forth. So he's not as dangerous as uh, Andreas Ivanovic uh, was. But, you know, they, they lost some core veterans, and they got a lot of newer guys. And I think I read somewhere like that, they got like five or six open roster spots, and they still have a DP spot. So wow. I know a lot of people up here in Seattle aren't too happy with Garth. Um, I mean, he's been here two and a half years, and this is kind of where the roster is right now, and there's not a lot of happy people. But look at last year. After 11 games, granted, they had four wins, but... <laughs> They're not, they're, all it takes is three, four wins, and they're already ahead of in a row, and they're already ahead of where they were last year. Exactly. Granted, they have a, you know, they they have Real Salt Lake on Saturday at, at uh, two p.m. Pacific, so we'll we'll see how that goes. But you know, I mean, if, yesterday they didn't have. Oh, I, was sorry, just, go I, I was just going to say, I mean, if New England can beat them four zero, I'd like to think that Seattle can beat them by at least two or three goals as well. But you know, I don't know soccer because well, nothing makes sense in MLS this season. Well, yeah, I was going to say, who knows? I mean, right. we were with that lineup that came out last night. We were we were all joking, like, oh, Seattle probably went 5 nothing, And for the first 53 minutes, they were not to steal a Caleb Porter quote, but the first 53 minutes, they were the better team. <laughs> and then they just kind of literally forgot how to play soccer. And then we've learned real quick, once they go down a goal, it, they lose that mental toughness and... One comes in, two comes in, three comes in. So, you know, it's just one of those things. There's a lot of other talk around people aren't happy with Schmetzer either, and I'm like, it's his first year, give him some time. Yeah. But I think in the end, they'll probably squeak in the playoffs again like they have the last two years, and we'll all be laughing about this again. <laughs> well, speaking of that, it actually it, it is amazing to me how obviously the Timbers won the Cup two years ago, then they don't make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Jokingly, I said to you after Seattle won the Cup last year is, you guys better make the playoffs this year. And uh, it, it is interesting to see you guys sitting 10 out of 11 teams in the West. Uh, but another team I'd like to talk to you about, Chris, and this is assuming you, you've been maybe watching more of, more of the league than, than maybe you could, uh, but the Chicago Fire sitting fourth in the Eastern Conference. That midfield, uh, I mean, talk about, talk about a GM who's pulled some great moves. Dax My McCarty, Janino. 
uh, playing in that midfield yeah. and oh, Schweinsteiger's and, and hanging around somewhere. Schweinsteiger too. playing up top. It's it's been a great combination be- yeah. between those three. I actually wasn't too surprised. I had I had thought Chicago would at least make the playoffs this mm-hmm. year, but I didn't expect them to be as good as they are. I'm wondering if you could comment on the fire at all. You know, I don't get to watch too many Eastern Conference games because honestly, a lot of times when they come on, I'm still at work. Uh, you know, us poor saps here on the West Coast. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's. Uh, from what I've seen of them, you could kind of see that it was coming over the last two, three years. You know, they have a de- uh, well. I don't want to insult him and say decent because he's better than decent. But you know, David Ocom's really good. He's an and then, as player. you mentioned, you know, they make that trade for a McCarty. You know, they bring in Schweinsteiger. You know, and just uh, everything's clicking for them right now. Um, so I mean, they they just need to roll with it while they can. Because, uh, I mean, they're, they're going to have their ups and downs throughout the season like every other team does other than maybe Toronto. Um, you know, it's they're really good. They've done a great job. To, uh, I like their coach. Uh, yeah, I don't get to watch much been, of them as I he, uh, Sorry, I was going to say Ponovich has done a great job. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he did a great job. I li- believe it was the U-20 Serbian team. Is that right? I, I have to go back yep. and look. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and it looks like he's – his. His big plan has finally taken effect in Chicago, and you got to yeah. give you got to give the fire credit for having patience with this guy. It's what you're talking about with Schmetzer as well. So, you you wonder, you know, how good can Chicago get if if all the pieces continue to fall together? Well, one of the things too that you can think about as you look at it, at least from a statistical side of things, Chicago is one of seven teams that is undefeated at home this season. Uh, one of three in the Eastern Conference, so they're well, five zero and one. That's where it starts. You got you got to make your home field the fortress. Exactly, a, and we're seeing the same thing with the Houston Dynamo as well. Yes, yep, exactly. I mean, you kind of look across the board. I mean, Toronto's undefeated at home. Orlando's undefeated at home. Uh, the Revolution, really, I'm surprised by that. They're undefeated at home as well, too. <laughs> Haven't won a road game to save their life. But, I mean, then obviously the teams that are doing well across the board, that makes sense. Sporting Kansas City, Houston, undefeated at home as well, too. So uh, you, you kind of see home success, for the most part, equals general across-the-board success as well, Chris. Oh, no, that that's very true. If you look at uh, last year, you know, when, uh, for example, not to go back to Seattle, but you know, Brian Spencer took over, and then up until their last home game against Toronto FC, he hadn't lost a game at home. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if you win at home, you're going to have good placement in the league, you know, because, well, you got 17 home games. Let's say maybe you lose one or two games at home and maybe throw in two ties. So what that leaves you was at 13. You know, maybe you win 10 games at home, let's just say. Well, then all you really need to do is win between two to four on the road, throw some ties in there, you're going to be a high seed in the playoffs. So if you do what you got to do at home, you're good, you know. Unfortunately, not a lot of teams can do that. They're really good at home, and they play horrible on the road, or they're just horrible altogether, kind of like the founders are right now. <laughs> hey, Chris, we are a third of the way into the season. Just curious if you have any teams that you would choose as a, as a surprise, whether it's for the better or for worse. Um, off the top of my head, uh, oof. well, Toronto's – well, I'm not surprised by Toronto. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that run, they just played, what, six games in 15 days, and they're they're still rolling. Um, FC Dallas has been very impressive. Um, you know, they haven't lost a game yet. Uh, Houston, biggest shock, and I think probably the – and also Minnesota, they're, they're hanging in there. They've, they've definitely rebounded. Uh, but overall, I, I think probably the most disappointing would be Montreal, uh, especially after the season they had last year. And then uh, even uh, – even even the Sounders in Real Salt Lake. I mean, there's just kind of been a not-so-good beginning of the first third of the season. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, for everybody involved, everything will uh, uh, get better. And I'm sorry, I said Real Salt Lake. I meant Colorado. Ah, that was it, the one I that mean, kind of shocked me. Either both, though, are still not, not doing the, the best. For me, if I had to pick one, I would say Orlando. Uh, especially with the exit of Kevin Molino as well, too. I was You weren't really sure what you were going to get, and then Kaká goes down early in the season. I know he's back now, but you and I talked about that a lot, Simon. We were like, well, good luck, Orlando. We'll see you, we'll see you in a couple of months when Kaká comes back. And they were like, just kidding. We're going to sit in second place right now because we're actually a good team. <laughs> yeah, well, Jason Christ is getting the, the personnel that he wants. He's yeah. able to start using that diamond again that he loved using in RSL. So That's a big part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chris, any other final no, thoughts no. for us, sir, before we let you book out of here today? Uh, no, maybe pray for us poor Seattle folk out here and, uh, for, for Saturday. 
Uh, we also think we might actually be seeing that bright orange thing in the sky. I believe it's called a sun. <laughs> Ooh. Um, you guys get that thing it's out there? It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, occasionally. Well, you know, we've already set records for most rain fall in a year, and it's only May. Wow. So nice. that tells you how bad it's been. But, no, uh, just, you know, it, it's been a – it's hard to believe a third of the season's already over. It's been excitable. I, hopefully I can be a little bit more happier and maybe <laughs> – Another 11 games or so. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we look forward to uh, hearing your and seeing your smiling face at some point again, Chris. Uh, we Chris, always, I, we hey, always love it. And I will, I will pray for that rain, but I can't pray for the Sounders. So. Yes, unfortunately <laughs> not. We'll pray for the city of Seattle, but we won't ever pray for anybody else. That's fine. I get it. You guys can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, Chris. We'll talk to you soon, sir. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. There goes uh, Chris Blakely on the shopfutsal.com. Call in line. A uh, quick reminder for you, of course, to check us out on the social media universe. Uh, we are at 2 upfront Soccer on Twitter, at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. Uh, we've gotten a bunch of great tweets over the last couple of weeks with the season rolling on and different comments we've made as well, too. So thanks to all of you uh, for your engagement and for engaging with us on Facebook as well. Yeah, too. absolutely. Let's not forget, too, uh, one, one of the things we're very proud about is we are sponsored by Three Lions yes. Pub. So if you are in Milwaukee, make sure you get a chance to head down to the Three Lions Pub. Great Great food, great atmosphere. I love their slogan, across the pond is now across the street. So make sure you check out Three Lines Pub in Shorewood. Absolutely. All right, so we kind of flew all over the place with MLS and NWSL, and we didn't really get to dive into more nitty-gritty things. I want to go back to NWSL for a brief moment because there's a big thing that happened that we didn't really touch yeah. on at all because yes, we had sir. a great interview. Uh, Mal Pugh has officially come out and signed with the Washington Spirit. Uh, she is also a Nike athlete as well, too, so she is going to have the opportunity to hire an agent. Uh, and it just kind of changes the perception of what Washington is now because we were talking about this many times before the season. Who's going to score the goals? Who's going to do anything in Washington this year? Sure is not going to be Christy Mewis. We've talked about that a couple of times. We've been critical of her career a little bit. She's a good player. She's not someone you can depend on. And then they trade away most of their midfield and some of their defense, and it's like, good luck, Washington. We really have no idea but now they've got a, a firing weapon that is Mal Pugh. She helped two different women's national teams qualify for their own respective yeah, World Cups. Yeah, absolutely. Like, what? Like, who does that? And she's not even 20 years old. Yeah, you know, we, we love Rose of Lyle. She's been on the show, uh, scored two goals now on, yeah, on her rookie her. season as well. And now you add somebody in the mix like Mel Pugh. Just, it just adds to the excitement of the NWSL Baxter. And it does say a lot about Washington. My question is, is they did say they have a plan was this the plan? Was this was this the ultimate plan? Did they did they, did they need to clear enough space yeah. in in the small salary cap that are NWSL teams? You think she's uh, commanding that much money? I, I wouldn't be surprised. That's true. I, I, she's I not, be she's not an allocated player either, so they actually have to pay her right. at least for this season. I'm assuming she'll become an allocated player next Absolutely. year. I'd be shocked if she wasn't. Right. Uh, aside from that, because part of part of the reason know. she's not allocated is nobody knew what she was going right. to do. We thought she was going to go to Europe. We thought she was going to play in France. Then well, she decided thought she to was going to play at UCLA too. Right. And then she said, uh, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm yeah. not going to play. Do you uh, think it's a mistake for her career? Do you think she made the right choice? No. No. I I am always a proponent of you can go back to school. True. And if you've got the chops to play professionally, you know you can suffer a career-ending injury in college that then you never get to the pro ranks. It's true. So I say. If you have the opportunity, you know, go for it. Why not? Yeah. Take it. Makes sense to me, I guess. I mean, yeah, I, I don't I don't fault her for going either. As long as uh, she's been properly advised, then this would be different if she was one of those like, oh, she had one good season, but she's consistently proven at an international level. She hasn't played club, but at the international level, that she's one of the, the best within maybe the 10 to 15 player range, I'd like Absolutely. to say. I don't want to get too crazy with predictions and say she's a top 10 player in the world. She's not. She's probably 15 to 20 in my range, but she still is incredible. She knows she can play. You're playing against the best in the women's game in NWSL. She's going to be successful. I really think she is. I think, I think she is as well. I think we're going to see similar uh, to her what, again, we've seen with Rose Lavelle. Rose yeah. Lavelle hasn't been intimidated by this league in the least bit, no. Baxter. Uh, I, and in fact, she's, she's shown some of these players <laughs> how to play the game. She has. That is true. We haven't seen as many uh, Rose Lavella soft comments recently because we saw we were, we heard, we heard that was the, the communication for a while right. after her uh, kind of beating she took against North Carolina as well. Uh, I want to talk about Houston really fast just because I've been very frustrated with what they've done. Do this you want to make this a monologue? Should I, should I, mean, I walk I should, out of the studio cannot, for a little bit? I can bit? make it a single shot and just <laughs> look you down and just be like, listen, Houston, get it together. I, I really, I've been talking with people that are 
around the club that cover the club and I've just been I've been trying to figure this out I've just been like somebody somewhere help me and from what I've been told from people that cover the team from what they've kind of heard and seen is that the players don't really respect what Randy Waldron is trying to do and that's caused a lot of division and the big component that you know journalists that I know that cover the team they say it's because Carly's not there because Carly shuts people down and says enough of this like this is what we've got going on I'm your leader, listen to me, kind of a thing. And because she's not there, that's why I think there's been so much just chaos and nothing is going on. I say interesting, Baxter, because she, she also wasn't there for half the season last year because of her injury. And, right. and, I, and I know but she was still around, though. Around, but, but I know that there were some people upset with her that the first game back was playing with the U.S. Mm-hmm. national team. Right. Saying, wait, hold on, you know, we're the one paying you. Well, I guess U.S. soccer really was, was paying. But, I know but, what you're but saying, nevertheless, yeah. Um, for the fact that, you know, Houston was waiting on her and waiting on her and waiting mm-hmm. on her, and then the first game back is for the U.S. team. Right, and uh, like I said, Houston has been such a mess. I've been very critical of their defense. Nobody seems to know how to fix that defense. I've heard that even even the goalkeepers, they've got great goalkeepers, Jane Campbell and Lydia Williams, two of some of the very best. You've got, like, one of the best from the Australian side, one of the best up-and-comers as well. They still can't seem to do anything. And even from a firepower perspective, too, nothing seems like it's clicking. So, they always seem like they just keep missing each other. So let me ask you then, what, what's it going to take? It's going to take an entire rehaul of the defense is really what it's going to come down to. I mean, either players need to get played out of their normal position to try to get experimental, or you need to trade somebody away, trade one of your 9,000 midfielders that you have for a defender that's going to actually play defense and actually command a back line. It, and let me be so bold to ask, is it a, ma- a matter of also changing the manager? Uh, you'd like to think that it potentially could be because of what you have. And this is kind of why I'm surprised that Jay Heap still has a job, too, because I see a lot of parallels between. You know, he has a job. He got an extension this year. I know. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, I see a lot of parallels between the Revs and the Dash because of how offensive heavy both teams are. But they struggle on the defense and goalkeeper side at times, more so defense. And I think if Randy Waldron is going to stay as a manager of this team, they need to start winning quickly. But he has to change something. He just absolutely has to. But I won't be shocked in three, four, five weeks when we even get you know into July and all of a sudden Randy Waldron's gone because the Dash are sitting in one of the last two or three spots in the standing. So Yeah, it can't continue to happen. I'm not, I'm not a Randy Waldron supporter, so if he gets fired, I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be like, they made a mistake. If they need to fire him and find somebody else to come in and fill that void, I don't know who that is, but if it is, I'm, I'm on board with that. I think that might help jumpstart whatever the heck Houston's trying to do right now because it's not working, whatever it is. No, it's not. So Absolutely not. I, I'm hopeful for that. I mean, they sit in seventh place right now, uh, six total points on the season. Uh, they're two, three, and zero. Oh. You can't lose the sky blue. You can't concede five goals against Seattle con- and, and expect to be a playoff contender. You just no. can't. So, hopefully, something happens sooner rather than later. But you never know when it comes to NWSL. So, uh, looking over at Major League Soccer, uh, were there any storylines or any games you wanted to go back and take a quick look at or look ahead to for this week? I just want to talk about uh, Minnesota. I, I, you know, they started the season where everybody was thinking, including myself, that they were going to break the record for goals yeah. allowed this season. They were they, bad. They, very they bad. were bad. They suddenly have gotten things together. They're taking on. Are they taking on the Galaxy next, Baxter? Is that, is that what my computer's trying to tell me? I believe so. Uh, that'll be interesting because Ramirez and Ibarra both grew up in the L.A. area. It's actually a nice story of them on MLSsoccer.com. Yeah, the game's on ESPN uh, on, the, on Sunday. Okay, so, so these, both these guys are really excited to, to play in their home area. Obviously, mm-hmm. they have a bunch of family there as well. Ibarra's story's great for the fact that he was playing yeah. with Minnesota United in the NASL, got called up to the U.S. national team, spent some time in Mexico, didn't really end up playing much down there, Not but much, yeah. gets uh, uh, transferred back to Minnesota United. Yep. And... and Minnesota has seemed to figure out a few things. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting with this LA game because at the same time LA Galaxy haven't beaten the New York haven't beaten the New York Red Bulls three to one no. uh, at New York. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have finally started to figure things out a little bit. Uh, so so that for me is even though we're talking about this past weekend, um, I'm kind of looking ahead. That that to me is the most interesting game that could happen this week. It could also mm-hmm. be the most boring. Um, <laughs> but, you know, not not a huge surprise that Minnesota lost to Toronto. Yeah. But, you know, expansion team losing to what I think is the best team in the league right now, 3-2. to two, So right. they were still able to break down that defense a bit and, and, and make this a game. you got to feel good about Minnesota United. I find it interesting, too, that people aren't talking about Toronto. 
they're like the one they're the one team that continues to run through their opponents but people really don't give them a lot of press like if you notice that even on mlssoccer.com and other forms of media as well too i feel like everyone's talking about the da- or talking about the dynamo people are talking about fc dallas sporting kansas city yeah i think part of that is uh, i mean mls does have them ranked number 1 in their power they rankings do, i think right. soccer america does as well uh, but i think part of that is is you expect that of tfc right. now you you're, just, you're not at that point where you're like, whoa, what are they doing? Right, it's like, exactly. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Right. We thought they were a good team. They're playing like a good team. They're winning. Good. Right. They, they were in the MLS championship last year, the right. MLS Cup. Uh, they should have won that. Should have. Uh, it's, Still it's mad about that. Terrible when you lose to a team um, who didn't score, a, uh, put a single shot on goal. <laughs> <laughs> but, still uh, remember but, my, but I still remember but ranting about that. I think that's what it comes down to is that Toronto is who people expect them to right. be, whereas a Houston Dynamo, now you and I expected them yes. to be good, uh, but the rest of the country didn't. Yeah. So the rest of the country still in shell shock about how well the Dynamo is playing. It's um, unbelievable. Speaking of the Dynamo, though, they lost to Philadelphia. They did. Which is, Philadelphia has been weird. I was going to say, I don't, at I don't the same like time, it. Philadelphia's on a two-game winning streak <laughs> I don't all of a like sudden. It. It's weird. A hat-trick by CJ, uh, C, CJ Sapong yep. the previous game, uh, and then, then they go out and, and surprise the world and, and <laughs> get another win. Philly hasn't lost for over a month. They are undefeated in their last five games. They've won three and drawn two. Won three? Okay. Won their last three. They, uh, they went out, they beat the Red Bulls, they beat DC United, and they beat Houston. They've shut out their opponents in all three of those games. They scored a total of nine goals in the last three games. That's impressive. Yeah, over I, the, I don't even know what to say to over that. Over the last five, they've outscored their opponents twelve to three. Putting things together. Uh, maybe. <laughs> and even the games they lost. I'm looking at their schedule. They lost two to one, two to one, three to one, two zero. Yeah, the difference is though those score lines may look close, but if right. you watched they any weren't. of those games, those they games were, were bad. Philadelphia was in complete disarray. Yes, I mean they even conceded first in the game as well. Oh, I'm sorry, not that game. I'm thinking of. What game am I thinking? I'm thinking of the NYCFC. Anyway, sorry, that's another game that we're, that we're thinking of. But whatever is going on in Philadelphia, whatever the guys that the, they are doing, it's players that are rallying together that are saying, look, we don't have a bad roster. We just need to start working together. And some teams just takes a little bit longer sure. than others. Well, Chris Pontius had came out and said he's basically having the most fun in his career right now. Which is what this, you want. With the stretch that he has. Yeah, you got to enjoy it. Listen, if, if, if you're a professional athlete and you're not enjoying what you're doing, you got to reevaluate why am I playing this game? Right. You know, if you're getting paid to play a game and you're not enjoying that, <laughs> maybe it's time to hang up the boots. Right. I completely agree with you on that one. Um, any other takeaways from the weekend at all before we look ahead to this upcoming week for both uh, Major League Soccer and WSL? Just uh, for me, I'm really inter- interested to see what happens with Portland. They, they've been on a little bit of a dive. They've got an opportunity here taking on Montreal mm. uh, this coming weekend. So, you know, if, if you're Portland, yeah, it's an away game, but... Montreal has been surprisingly for me that that is Chris had said it but for me that's the most surprising bad team this I agree year. and they've got 10 points so they're they're technically not the worst team because Colorado's the worst team statistically but Montreal has been next to existent this year right been pretty bad honestly. right right so so I'm interested to see is is Portland able to overcome some of these injuries mm-hmm. are they able to put things back together and be the right. powerful team that they should be considering they're getting their back line back together or is, or is that part of the problem is, you know, it's always one of the tricky things. Liam Ridgewell comes back mm-hmm. after being away for so long. That defense was playing pretty well. That's true. Now you mess with that chemistry. Is it going to take a few more games for, that, for, the, for the chemistry with the older guys coming back to, to find itself in order for Portland to be able to move forward like they had been? Right. So when you look at the docket of games this upcoming weekend, there is some very intriguing matchups. Uh, you mentioned Montreal-Portland. Did you give us an official word? Are you going to take the Timbers in this one? I'm taking the Timbers yeah, in this I, one. I, I have to agree with you on that one. Uh, the games that do intrigue me, uh, D.C. United and Chicago. I'm also intrigued by the um, – oh, where did it go? By Atlanta, Houston. That game intrigued me. But also Orlando, NYC, FC. Those are, like the, big, those are the big ones remaining that really – Pique my interest. Uh, I want to know if Sporting Kansas City can obviously keep their run of form going. Same for Philadelphia as well, too. They've got a chance to beat a bad team. How many times have we seen a team that's like, oh, I have to play the worst team in the league. This should be easy. And then they lose by like three or four goals. That's a great point. Actually, this this will be a true test for Philadelphia. Are they right. going to play to the level of their opponent like good teams do? Or are they going to be a great team right. and continue to, to play as well as they have been these last few games? True. We do want to remind you, of course, that our MLS predictions are brought to you by Redline Pub. They are also based here in Milwaukee. 
Malarkey, the sister of uh, Three Lines Pub, Absolutely. our presenting sponsor. So go check out the Red Lion Pub here in Milwaukee for fish and chips and all the other fun, yummy goodness that they provide. Uh, New England actually finds themselves uh, playing Columbus this weekend. That's going to be a fun game. Uh, I don't know what to expect from the Revs anymore. I feel like I say that every single <laughs> week, and I am always come back on, on the next week being like, I still don't know. I still don't know what to do with my hands. Columbus is in third place in the Eastern Conference. This is on the road for Columbus. They have to go to New England. New England's undefeated at home. Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go with New England on this one. Hmm. I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I want to. I want to. I really do. Uh, I'm going to agree with you on that one. I think New England takes this game, honestly. I, I'll, I'll be surprised. Um, I don't know. I won't be surprised if they lose. That's what I meant to say, so keep that in context i guess but let's go back to dc and chicago and then we can go actually through all these here so dc and chicago uh dc hosting the red hot chicago fire right now does chicago blow through dc united when when do i, I don't see them on my schedule oh there we go we got a friday night <coughs> friday oh, that's night right. game right de football yeah red bulls taking on toronto fc in new york tfc yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking much about that one, honestly, which I'm sure means that Red Bulls, congratulations. Yes, right. You're going right, to win 6-0. Exactly. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, TFC is just, is just too good right now. Um, I, if Red Bulls win, I mean, it's going to be a hard-fought game that they're going to squeak out a point or they're going to squeak out a victory late, but I'm not, I'm not predicting I, I that the could, Red Bulls run away with this one. I could conceivably see a, possibly a draw here. but I could. I, I could see a 2-1 or a 1-1 sort of sure. fixture uh, in favor of either of these squads, honestly. Uh, so TFC both for us. Chicago wins. Portland wins. Seattle RSL. What do you think? Um, Mike Pecky's team last night looked well. Uh, he Did. was very excited about it. But you know, Seattle's playing be, a lot of games uh, in a few days. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take RSL. It's going to be RSL? my quasi. Hey, can you call it upset anymore? No, that's no? not an upset All right, anymore. I'm going to I'm going to take RSL. Okay. Now in this next game if you took Atlanta over Houston, that would be an upset. Even I though it's like. in Atlanta? Even though it's in Atlanta. Atlanta drew with Portland. They did. But at I mean Providence Park. In uh, statistically, statistically Atlanta's the worst team of the two. Well, I'm taking Atlanta Are you? because okay. Houston hasn't been that great on the road yet. Mm, interesting. So I'm, I'm going to take Atlanta United. I'm going to go a draw on this one. I'm actually going to take a an RSL victory as well too in that last okay. game. I forgot okay. to get to that one. And um, we both took Chicago, is that right? That is correct. Right. Yeah, I mean, we both took Philly over Colorado, correct? Yes. Okay. Vancouver yes. Sporting Kansas City. This is a Sporting. Is this a trap game? Sporting Kansas City. You don't think so then. Okay. No. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, he's enough. They're putting things together. They are. They it's really the Peter are. Vermes team in Kansas City, so you never <laughs> quite know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but That's I'm going to go with Sporting KC. That is true. Uh, FC Dallas, San Jose, FC Dallas playing host. This is actually the most intriguing game to me, Baxter, is because okay. San Jose is figuring things out. Young Worth has is, is got a nose for that goal right now. Of course, FC Dallas, we've been talking about them all season. Mm -hmm. Undefeated. Uh, I'm going to take... FC Dallas hmm. in this game, okay. but I could easily see this one being a draw as well. Interesting. Yeah, this game has got a lot of different narratives for me in this one. Uh, San Jose, they got that nice draw over the uh, just last night against Orlando. Tommy Thompson's shot assist, whatever it was, that found <laughs> Wondolowski. Was he offsides? Was he not? Mm, it's kind of hard to tell. It was, it was a fast. But he thing, didn't bang. put it over the goal. <laughs> I know. Wow. Couldn't have done that a couple of years ago, Chris. Could you have? Lord have mercy. People are saying, come on. Seriously. <laughs> Sorry, he'll never live it down, ever. He really won't. <laughs> you can't. You don't. Anyway, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Um, I think San Jose is going to push FC Dallas to the limits, but I think FC Dallas at home is still a very hard place to win. Even though they're from also an equally warm climate in San Jose, I think FC Dallas grabs the victory in this yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about the Revs in Columbus, uh, Minnesota, and the Galaxy. You kind of talked about it earlier I'm, in the I'm show. I'm taking Minnesota in this you one. Are. Okay. Yeah. This game's on ESPN, 4 p.m. Central Time, for those of you here in the Central Time Zone. Um, it's, Minis it's in Minnesota. It is. So you have to consider that. Um, I don't know what the weather's going to be like in Minnesota. That was that was a factor I was thinking of. It's been warm up there, so I don't know what's supposed to be on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'll fly with you. I'll fly with the loons, I guess, for this one. and. and and see if they can pull out a victory over the struggling Galaxy right now. And Christian mm -hmm. Ramirez and Miguel Abar have been playing well. Yeah. You can't argue against that. So Christian Ramirez has, I believe, eight goals on the season. So props to him. Uh, final game, Orlando and NYCFC, the expansion battle. Yep. It's always fun. Even though they're not expansion teams anymore, they still, I feel like, call it the expansion Absolutely. battle because they were the big ones after such oh, a Oh, it's the time. Jason Christ Cup is the way I look it at is. it. It is. I'm excited. This is in Orlando in the yeah. gorgeous stadium. It's on FS1, uh, 6 o'clock Central uh, on Sunday is Jason Christ prevail? Yep. 
He's he's got New York City's number this this year, Baxter. He does. Uh, I'm definitely taking Orlando. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with the other way. I'm going to go NYCFC. I think they're a little uh, hungry after their surprising loss to RSL uh, last night, and I think they're going to take out some frustration on Orlando. So All right. Looking forward to that one. Uh, last part of the show as we roll in, if you have any predictions, of course, give it to us in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, or tweet at us at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan, at 2 Upfront Soccer as well, too. Uh, we move into the final part of our show. It is our I Believe segment. Actually, actually, before <laughs> we do that, Baxter, oh, no. we cannot neglect our NWSL predictions. Oh, my gosh. It's like I don't even know the own show. And we've got extra time today, don't so even we're, so we're going to take show. it. What the heck is going on? All right, NWSL predictions. That's what I meant to say. Not I believe we should do NWSL predictions. <laughs> That's what go. I meant. There you cut go. me off. I couldn't finish. All right, uh, looking at the weekend, Boston-Portland. How fun is that game going to be? It's going to be a fun one. Ooh, baby. I am. Y- maybe you can call it an upset. I'm actually taking Boston in this one. Wow. It's going to be a fun game to watch. Okay. You know, Rose Lavelle taking on Ellie Long mm-hmm. and, and Tobin Heath and every other U.S. player that you can think of. That's true. And a couple uh, of Canadians and a couple other French. Adriana French uh, has three shutouts on the season, though, for Portland in goal. So that, that may play a big role in this, Baxter. It may be the biggest test for Rose Lavelle when it gets down to it. Listen, Boston has been able to put a couple of wins together this season. They're in fourth place right now. Only a point separates Portland and Boston right now in the standings. Portland is still the better team. I still have not been completely sold on what Boston's doing. They have the pieces to be successful. They're still trying to get stuff put together, though. And, yes, I think Rose is going to shine, but I also think because she's playing against ladies that know how she plays, it's going to hurt her. That happened when Sam Mewis matched up against her. That's true. That's a good point. Allie Long and Sam Mewis, virtually the same person. And in in some regards, I think Allie's going to put Rose on her back a couple of times. Yeah, well, see, the interesting thing for me is they – have both scored the same amount of goals mm-hmm. team wise now five yes. goals each uh, again only only averaging one goal a game uh, not could be a low scoring affair yeah that is so. very true uh, All right. Yeah, I've got Portland. You've got Seattle. Uh, you've got uh, Boston in this one. Uh, New Jersey. I love how they're called New Jersey. It's sky blue. Can't you change the abbreviation to SBFC? Come on. <laughs> is that taken? Is that TM'd? <laughs> Anyway, I love the name of their city, by the way, Piscataway. Piscataway. I lived, I lived near Piscataway for those couple of months when I was out east. And mm. I, I just love saying that name. Yes. It's a, I guess maybe as a theater guy, I, I, I like words. Piscataway. Right. I love it. It's broadcasting <laughs> from Piscataway. I like it. Uh, Sky Blue playing host to Houston. This game is on Lifetime for Eastern. Oh, boy. Um, I don't know what to do with my hands on this game because I can't I can't tell you who Houston is, but I can't tell you who Sky Blue is either. They just played last week. You'd like yeah. to think maybe they make some changes if you're Houston. Maybe you'd, like I said, play some players out of position, just get somebody, just start throwing things around and say, <laughs> let's see what happens. Where's Rachel Daly been? Where's Keely Ohi been? Where's Melissa Henderson been? Sarah Hagen, where, where have these girls been? They're not playing like the way that we know that they can. So maybe they finally have a coming out party after finally getting an idea of what New Jersey nope. or what Cloud9 is. is gonna be in full force, full no! voice. Sky Blue FC takes no! this one, Baxter. Say it's not so. <laughs> I hope Houston wins. I'm gonna take Houston because I'm a homer. Uh, all right, Washington and Kansas City. Kansas City needs a victory. Washington needs a victory. And Kansas City, they need fans showing up to their games, they Baxter. Do. Not even 1,800 there last week. So come, come on, on, Kansas City fans. Get out there. This is a team, let's not forget, who has won the NWSL championship twice. So come on. It's not like they're not a good team. And they're virtually the same team as well. They right. haven't really lost a lot of players, I- aside from Amy Rodriguez. But I guess when SKC is doing so well, people stray away from FCC. yeah that could be that could be which Maybe. is sad to see there's no reason you can't right. support both teams exactly the funny part about this game if either team wins they're going to immediately rocket up the standings by a couple of places just because of how close everything is sure. right now so fckc has five points washington has four points so a victory could throw somebody within the top four in yeah theory. i'm, I'm in actually, theory. i you know you would like to think that perhaps the spirit are going to have some extra excitement that they're playing behind with right. with the mal Pew announcement but i'm going to go for a draw on this one baxter Does mal score is she playing? Do we know if I she's playing yet? I think she's going to play. That's what I've been told. I think that she's going to play. I don't know. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna take a home side. I'm going to, well, <laughs> Lord have mercy. This week is just atrocious when it comes to making picks. Uh, I'm going to go with Kansas City. I think they're going to win on the road. I'm going to spoil the pew party. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. I hope that's her, like, her dance. Like, psh, psh. <laughs> like, there we go. Uh, the big game of the weekend that I'm excited for, North Carolina and Chicago. North Carolina playing host. This game is on Sunday on the Go90 app, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, North Carolina 
Even though they had a very uncharacteristic loss last week, 3-1 to Orlando, North Carolina is still the best team in the league. They're going to recover like champions, and they're going to play like champions again and continue to suppress whatever kind of fake voodoo that the Red Stars are trying to cast on the league that they're a good team. Well, they should be a good team. That's the, They've been a very right. interesting team. Uh, but I agree with you. I think North Carolina takes this one, Baxter. And, uh, you know, they've, they've only given up four goals on the year, and three of those came in their last game. Wow. So they've got a very strong defense that, that had an off day. And, and you, being the way North Carolina plays, I can't believe they're going to continue to have off days. <laughs> I would agree with you. All right, last game, Seattle and Orlando. Sunday I think this night. is the easiest pick for me. Is it? It is. I, I think Seattle takes this okay. one. Okay. We thought it was going to be easy last week with Orlando and <laughs> North Carolina as well. But uh, Orlando, still has a, Orlando has a lot to prove still. I'm going to be totally honest with you on this one. So um, I'm going, going with Seattle as well on this one. So all aboard choo -choo. the <laughs> Seattle train. Make it rain, baby, or let it rain. Hashtag let it rain is what they do. So now can we go to the I Believe? Yeah, now we can oh, go to the okay. I Believe. Perfect. Now we can believe about certain things. <laughs> uh, would you like to go first? Sure. All right. Floor sure. is yours. What all do you right, believe? So, so I believe, Baxter, that what the U U.S. Soccer Federation needs to do to make the U.S. Open Cup really mean something, they need to put more money behind it um, in the respect of what the champion gets. But also, I think there needs to be more money for each level of team that goes on. So right now, the, the lowest, how do I explain this? I think most, I don't know if most people do know this, but... The, the amateur team that goes the farthest gets like $10,000. And then wow. the Division three team that goes the farthest, they get some money. Right. And, and it continues that way. Look, at the U.S. Soccer Federation is sitting on $150 million right now. So you want, you want this Open Cup to really mean something like it did back in the 70s, like it did back in the 60s? Mm -hmm. Tell these amateur teams, hey, if, if you're the last one standing... We're going to give you a hundred thousand dollars. That would change a lot, you know, because right now I think the the pot is two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the champion. Make that a million dollars. Right. I completely agree. I mean, I'm even thinking about the hometown team here, the Milwaukee Torrent, when they actually get eligible for U.S. Open Cup play. Hundred thousand dollars would do a lot for a absolutely for, for an NPSL team. And, and here's the thing too: is is why not try to work in there how how players can legally get bonuses? Right. You know, especially if it's a pro team, no problem. You know, each player gets such and such amount. That's that's going to incentivize incentivize no incentivize incentivize yep. the players to really want to play in this tournament but especially when you're talking about bigger teams like the mls teams and and some of the nasl teams and usl teams it's going to make them really want to go out there and treat this tournament with the respect that it deserves so i'm saying put more money behind this thing the simplest way to get players excited to get coaches excited to be in this thing that's the other thing too let's get bonuses to coaches who mm -hmm. who go the farthest is to put more money behind it u.s soccer has the money for it so do it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I completely agree. I mean, I've, I could use my I believe and say I believe that Simon knows a lot about uh, U.S. soccer. So <laughs> I'm going to just drop it there and move along, basically. No, I mean, I, I believe everything that you agree. I completely agree with you on all of that. Uh, my I believe is very short and sweet. Uh, I believe that uh, Mal Pugh, when her career is all said and done, is going to be considered one of the best to ever play the game um, in the NWSL, but also internationally as well. I think she has that much talent. I think she has that much uh just voodoo, I guess. I don't know the right word for it, but she just has that much going for her, that much potential. Well, fortitude as well. You yes. know, she's she's got her head on straight. She seems very grounded as mm -hmm, well. Too. Exactly. She doesn't get flustered by the big moments, and she seems to not be very. She's very humble as well too. So I think that mixed with all the other talent that she has is going to help her career go very far. So I'm excited to see what Mal Pugh has to offer moving forward. Excellent. All right, uh, we got to run, but we appreciate all of you for taking the time today. A very special thanks to Kaylin Sheridan of Sky Blue FC and Chris Blakely of Vavil USA and one of our great correspondents here on the Bruce Sports Network for stopping by today. Thanks for all of you that stopped by, that commented, that shared, that did everything. If you are just watching the show and you're watching it on demand, remember you can watch it here on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Spreaker.com. You can listen to it, download our show. It's also on iHeartRadio as well, and it's on our website, too, up front, the number two, two upfront soccer.com and on Bruce Sports website, brewsportsnet.com as well. Yeah, check us out on Facebook, two up front. Just type that in the search bar. You'll see us. Give us a like and a share while you're there. We'd greatly appreciate it. Also, find us on Twitter at two upfront soccer. Our personal handles at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. I'm proud of you. You got it right this week. I did. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> For Simon Provan, I'm Baxter Colburn. Thanks to all of you that watched. With our manager being the one above, we are two upfront. Three.